Thank you for the introduction, Patrick, and thank you all for being here. Intuit's mission is powering prosperity around the world. To really achieve that, to actually have an impact on people's lives, we need to do more than get you through the motions of filling forms and filing taxes. We need to offer significant, meaningful, helpful advice to help you thrive in your financial life as an individual or as a small business owner. We are transforming into an AI-driven expert platform, which means that we will be offering this advice either via ML or upon request by instantly connecting you with a human expert. We measure the success of this not merely by revenue goals or number of users. We seek to actually have an impact. We want to put more money in people's pockets and help them retain it for longer. We've declared a bold goal of doubling household savings for our customers by 2025, and we're already making progress towards this goal. We want to help small businesses thrive. We've declared a bold goal of achieving a 10% improvement in the success of small businesses after five years over the national average. Let me give you two examples of what this concretely means. <clears throat> Back at the beginning of the pandemic, small businesses were struggling. The government was offering a paycheck protection program, a program to offer forgivable loans to small businesses so that they can continue to pay their employees during the hard days of the pandemic. But we knew that small businesses were struggling to navigate the procedure of getting these loans. And we knew we needed to step in to help. That's one example of a challenge that we faced a couple of years ago. An ongoing challenge we're facing, just to give another example, is classifying transactions. Helping anyone in their financial life starts with understanding how their money is being spent. To do so, we need to be able to classify transactions. But classifying transactions is not global, it's not universal, it's very personalized. Each and every one of us, each and every one of you classifies transactions differently. So we knew we have to build ML models that are very, very personalized. And I'll pass it on to Manish to talk a little bit about how this is done. Thanks, Alon. We are tackling dozens of such challenges spanning AI, analytics, and real-time applications. Our data journey started at a place that would be familiar to many of you in the audience. Our data ecosystem was big, complex, and messy. We needed a strategy to unlock the full potential of this data for our consumers and small business customers. Under any circumstances, this would have been an incredible challenge. But given the growth and expansion of our company over the past few years, it's been even more so. In a sense, we had to learn the art of building the plane while flying it. By managing hundreds of thousands of tables with petabytes of data and harnessing decades of historical information siloed across various systems, all while nearly doubling the user base to over 100 million customers and significantly expanding our product portfolio. To catalyze our data journey, we needed a single unified architecture that could break down the data silos and accelerate productivity for teams across the company. This architecture needed to be capable of supporting diverse workloads, massive scale for both storage and compute, support real-time applications via streaming, and it needed to be built on top of open source to give us the benefit of using best-in-class tools and opportunity to give back to the community. This led to the adoption of a lake house architecture. Here's a high level view. On the left, we have data coming in from various systems in different formats. All of this data is curated and materialized in a clean data lake powered by Delta Lake. The data is further processed for aggregations, enrichment, featureization, etc. 
A majority of this processing is powered by Apache Spark, including Spark streaming. Next, the data is export, ex explored by hundreds of users using DB SQL and notebooks powered by Photon. We have recently started adopting MLflow to streamline machine learning for our data scientists. All of this lakehouse metadata is registered into what we call the Intuit data map. And all of these systems come together to power the AI, analytics, and real-time applications on the right. Intuit's data map is the registry for all business critical data at Intuit. It consists of three broad categories of information. The first category is the physical layer. It captures where the data and the code that generates the data is located. The second category is the operational layer. It captures information such as the ownership info, the system dependencies, and data classification. Both these categories of information are necessary to build a healthy operational system and are typically provided by most data platforms. You probably already have one of these. What's missing is meaning, the rich semantic information required by users to easily and successfully make use of this data. We call this the business layer. It captures the business context, the logical model of the data formally captured as an entity, and the relationship to other entities within and across its business domains. All these three layers come together to help us answer all possible questions that producers or consumers have about data in the lake house. With that, we have been able to build a delightful data discovery experience, enabling users to search and browse data and explore relationship to other business entities. Core entities such as user, product, transaction, and company are fully represented in the data map. Developers, data scientists, machine learning engineers, and analysts have the complete view of the data in a single place, eliminating the need to query multiple systems. Our journey to build this data map has begun about two years ago still ongoing. It is a company-wide endeavor. It's not something that Manish or I are doing together. It's everyone at the company is now seeing data as a core element and are producing clean entities to power the solutions we're discussing. I just want to go back to the customers that I started with. During the pandemic, as we were helping small businesses navigate the Paycheck Protection Program, we were able to support 40,000 businesses and deliver $1.4 billion in loans to these small businesses using the data infrastructure that Manish described. I mentioned the challenge of classifying transactions in a personalized manner. We now have 2 million personalized models to help people classify transactions in their language refreshed daily. And again, those are just two examples, and the journey has just begun together with Databricks. Thank you all.